Hey everybody, and welcome to AQ's Blog and Grill. We're really happy today to have Rob Barnett with us. Now, Rob Barnett is a pioneer. He's a bit of a pathfinder in terms of in terms of media and in terms of bringing people what they want, um, when they want it, and how they want it in terms of in terms of media and communications. He's also started his own channel called uh, My Damn Channel. He's a little cranky. But that's the name of the uh, the network, and uh, we're here to talk to Rob today, not just about the past, which is so glorious in his case, but also the future. So, Rob Barnett, welcome. Hey, thanks so much. You're one of my favorite friends to talk future with. It's good to see you. Excellent. Well, and may I also say, Rob, that you are one of my favorites. And I think you know we can get this whole thing going for like for the next 19 minutes. We can just say how nice each one of us are. <laughs> I think you've gotten. No, it's true. It's true. It's true. And I think it's since you've started to go to Prince Edward Island in the summertime, I've noticed, you know, it's your whole personality has taken on a new, friendly, politeness to it. And what, what's that about? Yeah. Well, that's that's your great country, I guess. De you know? New Yorking a little. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's where we, that's where we, that's our special place in the summer. So, Rob. What is it with you? You're always doing something. <laughs> What's your deal? You're always doing something new. Um, you've got that book beside you there, I Want My MTV. Tell us a little bit about your beginnings with music television, with M MTV. What, how did that get started? Well, I was there in that crazy thing called the 80s. So, uh -huh. so I wasn't really one of those day one people, but, but I, I did get there at the time when we were still just about 99% music video, one or two television shows were starting to, to creep into the mix. But that was one of the best experiences of my life. I worked there and at VH1 for almost 12 years and mm. had these incredible teachers. And, you know, that was a great place. Uh, it, it was a hell of a lot of fun. And now, like so many things, uh, I'll quote of one of my favorite, favorite friends who said sometimes a victim of their own success you know got really big and really corporate and a little bit less fun but boy was it wild in in, in the heyday absolutely and, and in some ways I think you you guys at MTV not just reflected pop culture you created a big portion of it at least in North America well you're looking whether you're at a radio station or an online channel or a television network, for me, the, the, the path to glory is always the same. You've got to identify the best talent out there right. and then figure out how to give that talent both the right car to drive, you know, the right support, the right gas in the tank. You know, yep. it, it, MTV, let, let, let's dumb it down for a second and just say it's a platform. And the platform's kind of meaningless without the artist. Right. So one of your one of your uh, endeavors has been uh, my damn channel, and so you, you I think you recognized again it was the, all of that comedic talent that was available, and it, and you just provided them the platform. Is that how my damn channel works? Well, we started with an idea in two thousand and six, but YouTube was still a baby in diapers. Right. And the earliest videos on YouTube were referred to as user-generated videos, and most of the stuff that was happening was homegrown, right? right? People were just kind of realizing that the technology was at a point where I could send a video from you here on the East Coast uh, to you from the East Coast of America up to Toronto in a second without that buffering. And, and the minute that 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 happened, uh, the technology kind of unlocked the creative part of my brain and said, wait a minute, this could be the best platform now for really talented people, not just homegrown, but mm -hmm. the pros, right. to figure out how to kind of end run the networks, get out of that major media monolithic world where Rob and Alan go in to pitch an idea and maybe they call us back or maybe they don't. And, you know, I, I just saw the immediacy of it as the new uh, door that I could help open for yeah. great talent. And, and that was the, the genesis. Yeah. And, and, and what talent you had? I mean, the, the people that help you launch from a talent point of view, what were some of the what were some of the comedians and the, the comic actors that you had that you started with? Well, I guess like anyone would do when you want to start your own business, 
uh, it's hard to knock on the door of strangers. It's a little bit easier to knock on the door of friends. Right. Uh, so on the talent side, I went to three of my friends with very specific intention. You know, I uh, in 2007, when we launched, we were yet again in one of those dramatic, life-altering presidential elections right. here in the United States. And I knew that that was going to be important uh, from a media point of view. And I've been very lucky for a long, long time to have Harry Shearer as a friend. Uh, you know, most people know Harry because he does about 30 voices on The Simpsons since yeah. day one. And not only uh, this is Spinal Tap, but, you know, all the collaborations with uh, Christopher Guest and Michael McKean, and Harry's a musician, and Harry is an author, and yeah. Harry, you know, has a radio show. Harry's got 17 full-time jobs. Yeah. But I went to Harry and said, hey, what if you entered this brand new medium and we did original online comedy direct to the audience without all the nonsense of a network in the way right. and, and I'll pay you, you know? <laughs> uh, so, so that, that, you know, that appealed to Harry and, 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 uh, you know, so he came on board and then I've always worked in rock and roll and one of my favorite, uh, friends and arguably one of the best producers in the world is a man named Don was, uh, look, right. him, you know, Google him if yeah. you don't know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Don, but he's produced some of the best music of all time and made some of the best music of all time. So Don signed on to run our music channel. And then I had worked with David Wayne back at MTV <laughs> yes. when he was in the state with 10 other uh, comedians that are all now some of the funniest people on earth. Right. I called David and I said, look, we're going to launch an online network. I'd like you to do our Seinfeld you know, can you come in and pitch me the best comedy series possible and I'll pay you and I won't give you any notes. And, right. you know, that became Wayne Days, which, uh, you know, we have done consistently for about six years in a row. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, the, the David Wayne show, uh, Wayne Days, was my favorite. I, I have never, I've seen every episode at least four or five times. Now, the other person that kind of emerged from uh, my damn channel was uh, was Grace. Um, how did that come together? Well, uh, we set out a course in the very beginning to bring in, as we just described, some of the most experienced people in entertainment. That was really day one. But not long after that, we realized that a phenomenon was occurring at YouTube where anyone could turn this webcam on in their bedroom and reach an audience that potentially could be as large as television. Right. So I realized that I wanted to not only learn about that world, but go out and see if we could find a talent and help develop somebody to, you know, rise to uh, a level where the audience could be as significant and large as some of the experienced people that we had. So uh, uh, we did an early series with Grace, kind of a tryout that uh, a great creator named Steve Kerper created. This was a show called Bedtime Stories, kind of uh, <laughs> you know spoofing classic fairy tales in a sort of dangerously edgy way. Right. Um, that was fun, and that was kind of a tryout. Um, when I saw that, I, I called Grace in and asked her to consider this new idea where we'd hire her. This is back in 2007, 2008. Uh, hire her to uh, create a show with us that was daily. I, I thought that you know early on in YouTube, it was important not just to put up a video when you felt the urge, but to try to steal some of the old ideas of television programming and turn the viewing pattern into something that you and I could rely on. Mm -hmm. if, if, you, if you cared about somebody, then I thought you, you needed to be able to build a relationship between artist and audience that was consistent. And that made it kind of easy to come up with the name Daily Grace. Right. The rest of it is all credit to her. This lady worked her ass off 
every single day with us for years and years and years. I used to beg her to take, uh, you know, a vacation or a sick day, or I'd say, well, it's Christmas, so can you please <laughs> take a week off? And she'd say, well, I'm going to go see my mom, and I'll just, you know, make a video. Right. And, uh, you know, just an incredible, incredible dedication, not just to the work, but most important, importantly to her audience, where instead of just making content that – we thought was great and have you sit back and applaud mm -hmm. you know grace knew instinctively from day one that the best show was a show that was completely co-created between grace and her fans and that relationship just built and built and built to the point where she became to her credit one of the most successful people on youtube Unbelievable. And you're right. I mean, there was that connection between the talent and the audience and her character, which developed over the over the years. Yeah, I did count on tuning in every day to see what was new or what her new perspective would be on what was old, because she did. kind right. of, You know, you know it, the status quo was kind of like a pinata. Uh, for her. <laughs> you know, whack, whack, whack. That's funny. OK. <laughs> Now, what's going to be next? We're getting right down to everyone is a producer, everyone's a, a publisher. How is that going to work out? Are we ever going to get tired of seeing each other just do stuff? Well, here we are 10 years later, not just uh, my path, but, but anyone that started working in online video 10 years ago realizes that in 2016, now we really are at that point that we all predicted 10 years ago where the rebel punk nature of what we've all done was going to shake the major, major media companies uh, to a point where their audience would start to suffer. That finally did happen, right? Yeah. And many cable networks in the United States in the last, uh, let's say, 6 to 12 months have lost 20 to 30 percent of their audience. Right. That's cancer. That, yes. That's a big, big problem. That's eating away. So, yep. so what happens next is your question. Um, Netflix certainly has one of the answers. Mm -hmm. Amazon has one of the answers. But I think you've got to, as a creator, just take a look at the world and say, okay, which side am I going to play on? Do I want to go get the next house of cards? Am I that person that's going to convince Ted Sarandos at Netflix to give me $4 million an episode and go take over the world? Or am I a creator who's focused on, say, a smaller loyal audience, but can I use all the tools of social media now to create an audience that is big enough, mm -hmm. loyal enough, passionate enough uh, to, to be able to then somehow figure out how to give me enough money as a creator to keep doing what I want to do with as few roadblocks in the way. So I think there's like, you know, it's really going to split as it is now. You see it happening, right? right. It's splitting into two, two camps, the, the camp of the indies in the camp of the, 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 the major OTTs, right? The Amazons right. and Netflix, the Hulus. Um, so you gotta, you know, you gotta pick a path and, 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 and figure out how to do the three things that every creator ultimately wants and needs. There's really just three. One is how can I best build my talent and my craft and keep getting to a point where my shit's so good that it's going to define my own success, right? right? That That's part one, and that takes people a while to, to build that talent. Right. Part right. two is building an audience, saying where can I build an audience that, again, I'll use these two words, that's big enough mm -hmm. to get me to part three, right. which is right. earning enough money to figure out how to make more of it. That's the hardest part. And, you know, everybody who goes out and makes their first ever online video is hoping that it'll be the best thing they've ever done. It'll get mazillions of views and pay me tons of money. Those three things usually don't happen all at once. <laughs> right. Uh, right. You, you, you got to go through step one to get to step two to make some money. So, it, it you know, it takes a while. 
Right. But 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 boy, is it is it available and easy, right? You yeah. and I can can stop doing an interview and start making the greatest creative show of all time five minutes from now, yeah. and there's a chance there's a chance that we'll get that Netflix money. That that's incredible. Now, Rob, I I, I think of you as a a pathfinder, which I've mentioned before, and. One of those things about pathfinding is the entrepreneurship that you show from a business point of view, but then you combine it with the creativity. So you're this, you're this artist, craftsman, uh, entrepreneur uh, that's building something new uh, all the time. And I love that passion of yours to, uh, to do that. So is that the future for uh, exceptional people like yourself is, is to keep creating branded content that ad agencies and clients are going to want to utilize? You know, I think it's fair to say that if it took 10 years, 10 long years for original online video to get to the point where it's at in 2016, I think having worked in branded content for the last 10 years, and, and I've got scars <laughs> oh, to oh. show it. Um, I, I think I can safely say that it's going to take another couple of three years okay. for more brands and more ad agencies to realize how crucial it is to create content that is first and foremost successful as content and secondarily helpful to building awareness, respect, engagement, and hopefully consumption of their brand. Right. You know, it's, it's to a point now where if you give just about anyone the opportunity to skip a commercial through the DVR on television, or through the tiny little X yes. on your computer when a lovely pre-roll ad comes up, it's hard to find a human being that will not skip that ad. Right. And as that becomes more and more of a reality and television ratings keep dropping uh, the way they have been in 2015, that then you're going to have to see more ad agencies and brands adopt uh, a method to create content that their brand is associated with. We've been lucky, you know, we've had some great uh, true believers that not only um, signed up with us, but gave us deals that were lucrative enough to exist for 10 years. Yeah. But I'd be lying if I told you that there were enough of them, but it's coming, you yeah. know, it's coming. Um, Definitely it, is. It, it, there's, there's, there's no stopping it now. And, you know, the, I'll just say one last thing. The fact that the average person, when asked this question, Alan, can only say Red Bull means there's a lot of companies that better catch up mm -hmm. to the philosophy that Red Bull adopted years ago, um, which is create great content to build your brand right. and don't just sell energy drinks. Bingo. Well, that's great. Rob, you're a very wise man. You're a very handsome man, I might say. <laughs> so, but we do have to say so long for now, but we want to have you back on another episode. And um, it's been great talking to you. And I know our viewers are going to pick up on, the, on branding. They're going to pick up on entrepreneurship. They're going to pick up on creativity. And they're going to pick up on passion, which is something that you have by the bucket full. So thanks again for joining us on AQ's Blog and Grill. Thanks for asking me. It's great to, great to talk to you. All right. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. AQ's Blog and Grill.